Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In the last video, we talked about gas exchange, how your cells take the oxygen from the arterial side and give carbon dioxide to the venous side, because this is needed for internal or cellular respiration. But have you ever wondered why the blood leaves the arterial side to go to the cell and then comes back to the venous side? to go to the heart. This is the story of the stalling forces. Now let's get started. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order so that the info can diffuse better into your brain. No pun intended. Your blood is made of plasma and cells. As you know, the plasma is water and proteins. The proteins are albumin and globin. Albumin is the most numerous. That's why when it comes to the osmotic pressure or osmosis, albumin matters more than anything else. Since albumin is the most abundant plasma protein, therefore, it is the most osmotically relevant. Because remember, osmosis cares about the number of particles, not the weight, not the size, the number. There is hydrostatic pressure and there is osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is the same as oncotic pressure. Okay. Hydrostatic pressure pushes stuff away from it, but osmotic pressure pulls stuff towards it. Moreover, hydrostatic pressure depends on what, well, if you remember, pressure equals force over area. What kind of force are you talking about? The force of the volume of the plasma inside the vessel pressing against the surface area of the blood vessel wall. Oh, so the more blood I have, the greater the hydrostatic pressure? Absolutely, because as the force goes up, hydrostatic pressure goes up. So this depends on the volume of fluid. Conversely, osmotic pressure depends on the number of osmotically active particles, i.e. albumin. The more albumin you have, the greater your osmotic pressure. So here is a lovely blood vessel. The hydrostatic pressure of the vessel will push stuff away from the vessel. I'm going to push fluid away from here. Okay. And this depends on what? On the volume of plasma inside the blood vessel. I get it. But how about the oncotic pressure of the vessel? The oncotic pressure of the vessel is going to pull fluid towards the vessel. And this depends on the osmotically active particles that you have. Translation, plasma protein, specifically albumin. Now I'll tell you two stories. The story of kidney filtration and the story of capillary filtration. Surprise, surprise. Both of them have the same net filtration pressure. The end result is 10 millimeters of mercury. In the case of the kidney, what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to get the blood from the arterioles into the tubules. We want the net filtration pressure to go from here to here. I get it. How about the capillary? Well, if you are at the arterial side, you want blood to go this way from the arterial side to the lovely cell. But on the venous side, you want the blood to go from here to here so that we can go back to venules, veins, and then back to the right atrium of the heart. Ergo, at the arterial side, you want the net filtration pressure to be positive 10 so that I can go out. But here you want to be negative 10 so that I can go back in. It's all about contact. Let's start by talking about the kidney filtration. What are we trying to achieve? We're trying to push fluid from the arterioles to the tubules. Hashtag filtration. Here is the arterial. Here is the tubule. What do you want to do? I want to push fluid from here to here from the arterial to the tubule. The net filtration pressure is going to be 10 millimeters of mercury. That will be the end result. Let's add some numbers for the arterial and numbers for the nephron or the tubule. Let's go. Inside the arterial, there is a pressure that wants to push. And this is called hydrostatic because it wants to push fluid from here to here. And this is about 60 millimeters of mercury. In this lovely afferent arterial, there is another kind of pressure that wants to pull fluid towards the arterial. And this is called the arterial or the capillary oncotic pressure. Let's leave the arterial or the capillary alone. And let's go to the tubule or the nephron. Inside the nephron, particularly the Bowman's capsule, there is the Bowman's hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic wants to push 
it's about 18. And there is oncotic pressure, oh, but it's zero. You know why? Because there is no albumin inside the nephron. A normal kidney does not let protein end up in the urine. If you have protein in the urine, we got a problem. If you have blood in the urine, of course we got a problem. What are you filtering then? Only plasma, only the fluid, not plasma proteins and not red blood cells. Can you tell me of these four numbers, who is favoring filtration and who is opposing filtration? Sure, the forces that are favoring filtration, i.e. the movement of fluid from the capillary to the tubule are number one, the capillary hydrostatic pressure. Number two, the Bowman's oncotic pressure because both are moving in this direction from capillary to nephron. So this one and this one, 60 plus zero equals 60. The favoring forces are 60, easy peasy. How about the opposing forces? The forces that do not want filtration. Number one, Bowman's hydrostatic pressure. It's about 18 and capillary oncotic pressure. And it's about 32. 18 plus 32 equals 50. The opposing forces equal 50. Therefore, what's the net filtration pressure? Favoring forces, 60, minus opposing forces, 50, equals 10. 10 what? Millimeters of mercury, because all of these are pressures. Let's do it one more time. We have two forces that favor filtration and two forces that oppose filtration. What are the two forces that favor filtration? Number one, glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure, which is 60. Number two, Bowman's pulling or oncotic pressure, which is nothing because there is no albumin in your kidney tubules. Next, forces opposing filtration. Number one, Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure, about 18. Number two, glomerular capillary oncotic pressure about 32 the favoring forces added together 60 plus 0 is 60 the opposing forces added together 18 plus 32 equals 50 60 minus 50 will give you the net filtration pressure which is about 10 millimeters of mercury translation after everything is said and done the fluid is moving this way from your capillaries to your tubules and this is called the net filtration pressure. How much are we moving this way? By what pressure? By about 10 millimeters of mercury. This concept is very important because this number can help you calculate the glomerular filtration rate, which is an indicator of how good your kidney function is. We're done with the story of capillaries in the kidney. Let's talk about capillaries in the periphery. The story of giving blood, i.e. arterial blood, i.e. oxygenated to the cell, and the story of getting blood deoxygenated back from the cell to the blood. For this to happen, the net filtration pressure here has to be positive 10 millimeters of mercury, and the pressure here has to be about negative 10 millimeters of mercury so that we can go back. Now, in all honesty, these numbers are not that accurate because remember, we have to account for the lymph. But let's just keep it simple. Do you remember my previous video? Yes, medicosis, let me tell you. You start left ventricle, oxygenated blood, then aorta, then arteries, then arterioles, and then you give oxygen to the cell and receive carbon dioxide from the cell. Arterial end versus venous end. Let's do it, but I'll put the left side here. Aorta, artery, arterial, and then the arterial is giving oxygen and nutrients to the cell. The vein is receiving carbon dioxide and waste products from the cell. Between your capillary bed and the cells, there is the lovely interstitial fluid very important. Just like your kidney capillaries, your peripheral capillaries also have hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure pushes, oncotic pressure pulls. And this is true for the capillaries and for your interstitial fluid. Your capillaries have hydrostatic pressure and oncotic. Your interstitial also has hydrostatic and oncotic. Let's talk about these stalling forces, the four pressures, at the arterial side only. What is the end result? Begin with the end in mind, as Dr. Stephen Covey said. Oh, the end uh, the result should be positive 10, which means what? 
blood will leave the arterial side and will go to the cell. Let's do it. The hydrostatic pressure at the capillary arterial end is about 35. Okay, is this favoring filtration or not favoring it? It's favoring diffusion or favoring filtration. Thank you. How about this? Oh, oncotic pressure inside the capillaries. It is opposing filtration. Let's talk about the interstitial. Hydrostatic pressure is about zero and this is opposing filtration. How about oncotic? Oncotic is about three and this is favoring. Let's add the favoring together. This is favoring. What's that called? Hydrostatic pressure of the capillary bed at the arterial side. How about this? Oh, this is also favoring. What's that called? The interstitial fluid osmotic pressure or oncotic pressure. It's about three. Let's talk about the opposing forces, the forces that are going in this direction right here. Number one, capillary oncotic pressure at the arterial side. It's about 28 plus interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure, which is nothing. When you add the favoring forces together, you get 38. Add the opposing forces together, you get 28. 38 minus 28 equals 10. Positive 10 from the perspective of the capillaries. Translation, blood is leaving the capillaries at the arterial side to go to the cells. The exact opposite is gonna happen at the venous side. When you do the numbers, it's gonna give you negative 10. What does that mean? It means blood is not leaving the capillary, blood is returning to the capillaries. You want to take it to the next level? Application time. There is a playlist on my channel called 5 Minute Review. In this playlist, we talked about kidney disease known as nephrotic syndrome. Basically, now your kidney is sick. The kidney is letting protein fall into the urine. Oops, is this a problem? Of course it is. Remember, your normal kidney should be like a good colander. It should not let any debris into the urine. By debris, I mean no plasma proteins and no blood should end up in the urine. But in nephrotic syndrome, you're losing protein in the urine. Including plasma proteins? Sure. Including albumin and globulin? Sure. What happens when you lose albumin? Albumin is the most relevant, the most abundant, osmotically active protein in my blood. <gasps> my oncotic pressure inside my capillaries will decrease. You know what's going to happen when the oncotic pressure inside the capillaries decrease? First, let me ask you this. What was the purpose of the oncotic pressure in the capillaries? It was to pull fluid towards the capillaries. Now you are no longer able to pull fluid. Fluid is going to leave the capillaries and fluid is going to go to the interstitial space. And you start to swell like a wildebeest. That's why if I am a patient and I do have nephrotic syndrome, the kidney is losing protein, I will have edema, which means swelling of my tissue. Why? It's because of disruption of my starling forces. I lost lots of protein in my urine. Therefore, there is less protein left in my blood. There is less plasma protein. I have less albumin in my blood, in my capillary fluid. Therefore, there is decreased oncotic pressure of the capillaries. Therefore, my pulling capability has decreased. Therefore, fluid is going to be pushed away to the interstitial fluid. And when fluid accumulates inside the interstitial fluid, you get swelling known as edema. If you like this video, you will enjoy my renal physiology course. You can download it today at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. I also have a neuropharmacology course, cardiac pharmacology course, antibiotics course, and many others. And for the next 17 students only, get a 40% discount towards any course on my website. Just use promo code TOXIDROME at checkout. It's medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense.